I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. Once again, I have my brother joining me for a movie review. Please reintroduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I am Balatron. And this is our review of Justice League, the long-awaited, highly anticipated film of the DCEU where all of their major heroes finally join together in live action. I give the movie a B plus in Bellatron. I also give the movie a B plus. The arguably biggest, greatest superheroes of all time, of any brand, finally in live action together, big budget, hopefully blockbuster movie. Uh, does it work? Does it not work? It's hard to tell because the previous DCE movies have been a very mixed bag. Uh, some people have liked them, some people hate them. Critics have been all over the place for them. Uh, and you were a bit disappointed by Batman v Superman as well as I, correct? Correct. Uh, did you see Suicide Squad? No. Well, I saw Suicide Squad. I consider it an enjoyable mess, but still it's a mess of a film. But Wonder Woman, thankfully, uh, came out very strong. I believe you liked it also, right? Yes, I did. So, where did this uh, lie? Well, as you can tell by our grades of both B and B, plus, it was pretty good overall. But we do have some issues. But let's talk about the good stuff. We're talking about superheroes. So let's talk about the good stuff first. Starting with, it's coherent. <laughs> well, for me, what I really enjoyed about the movie, it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. At the very beginning, we saw each superhero in their own individual world, doing their own business. And then we had the villain come and step out what his plan was for the movie. In the middle, we have a reason why all these heroes had to come join together um, for one mission. And also in the middle, we see the villain get the upper hand. And with the ending conclusion, we see the superhero basically beat the villain and that cliche, happy ever after. The end. <laughs> exactly. Which, you know, sounds very simple, but when it comes to the DCEU, simple is best. I, I, I was going into this movie, I had such low expectations mm -hmm with the rewrites and the reshoots and trying to hide Henry Cavill's mustache, apparently, because they had to do reshoots, but do some digital thing with his, with his mouth and having to change directors. And it's like, just be coherent. <laughs> just don't be a mess. Even if you're bad, I will be thankful if you just make sense. So, yes, the fact that this does have a firm beginning, middle, and the fact that this even doesn't uh, sequel bait, because the original title was Justice League Part 1, but no, this ends is solid. They could stop the whole franchise right now if they wanted to. I mean, sure, there's elements that they always do in these franchise movies where they like to tease more actors, but still, it's not like a total to be continued thing is left way up in the air. So, yeah, a multi million dollar big budget Hollywood film is coherent. That's the best thing we can say about it. But on to some other more specific things, and one thing that we definitely loved was the character balance and banter amongst the uh, main cast and some returning people. Especially Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is very fortunate that earlier this year we saw her movie where she gets to just showcase her power more than for her previous appearance in Batman vs. Superman. So in this movie, we took upon what we saw in Wonder Woman, and we saw Wonder Woman display her powers a little bit more, saw her great fighting abilities, her great strength her lasso abilities, so I was very impressed with Wonder Woman in this movie. Also, I was, I was impressed with The Flash as well. I haven't really watched none of the WB's <coughs> Warner Brothers TV series, but I know what The Flash is. I've seen the cartoons, and so I was very impressed with The Flash and his abilities that he showcased in the movie. Yeah. And Ezra Miller, as a Flash, is definitely a big standout. As the film was going, I was wondering uh, if it was going to be too much of the comic relief. I knew he was be, but I didn't want to turn to another Dark Dark Big situation where almost every joke is him. But even though he does bring a lot of the comedy, it's all fantastic. And his eyes, his eyes are so expressive and funny and weird and joyous. They were definitely a highlight of the film. So I want more DCU films. And as soon as we get a Flash movie, I want to see that movie. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, on the other hand, we're going to start uh, tapping a bit of the negatives. Aquaman, who does a you know great performance, Jason Momoa does a great performance. We don't get to see his powers in use that much. He just gets pretty much tossed around in fights. But it's like we don't. And we, he goes underwater at some mm -hmm. point, of course. Yeah. Uh, and of course, it's hard to use uh, uh, you know the big joke of what's 
Aquaman really to the table and be out <laughs> in the middle of the ocean somewhere. <laughs> but still, there's no, you know, don't really get to see him showcase his powers and abilities. I mean, he has his trident, so they probably could have shown his use his, use his trident a little bit more. But if they were near the ocean, I know most of the battles was on land, but they happen to be near the water, and at some point, they could have shown if they're near water, having to use water. Yeah. <laughs> Toss water. Yeah, yeah. Toss some water. person, some person, water. Aquaman, he got to control the flow of water. <laughs> like in, uh, and another time, he just can swim. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, there's a class, you know, communicating with fish. Those guys can talk to him, not have a conversation, or just, just influence him and things like that. So, this movie says, well, the water communicates to him. I don't know, maybe he's like some version of a. Uh, Moana, where he just sort of <laughs> has a number of psychic connection with the water, but he was still. Uh, but on the plus side, it does leave room for his movie. Because the problem I have with the Wonder Woman movie, in retrospect to Batman v Superman, is Batman v Superman, she just fights Doomsday and holds her own pretty well. But in the Wonder Woman movie, she has all these extra powers and abilities and is the god killer and is like flying around and harnessing lightning and walking in slow mo like she's Neo or something. It's like. Where were those powers when you were fighting Doomsday? You probably could have used them and re them when uh, you fought Doomsday. So at least by keeping it so vague in this movie, maybe it'll open up room for uh, um, his later film. Or maybe that stuff was left in the cutting room floor because a big issue that I have with this movie is that several scenes in the trailers are not in the film. And it's not as bad as... Uh, uh, Suicide Squad, which was practically a totally different film after what was finally done. Uh, but yeah, there are so many moments, a lot of them dealing with Cyborg, uh, where uh, it was in the trailers or in the commercials, but they're not here in the film. One thing that was in the trailer in the commercials was uh, Clark talks to Lois Lane, and he's like, uh, oh, I see you kept it. What? The, the ring. And the, you see her filled with the ring. But in the film, that line of, I said you kept it, was, was cut. Even though you can see her filling with the ring, so it's like, why cut that? And of course, a big moment was when uh, Alfred speaks to somebody off in the distance. <laughs> it's like, oh, they told me you would come. Now let's hope you're not too late. That that's not in the movie. Who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. Green Lantern, uh, Shazam, <laughs> Superman. You know, there was even some promo material with Superman being in his black suit, back on. So. You know, it, it's like, what, what, I'm just sick and tired of being shown stuff that's not in, going to be in the movie. Like, why even bother? But anyway, the last real negative we have is the inconsistent use or not use of secret identities. Uh, you know, tell them about that. Please. Well, if you're a big fan of comic books or in the past with these seen superhero movies, usually for the most part, superheroes try to keep their secret identities, like Bruce Wayne, well, Bruce Wayne, but doesn't really tell anybody that he's Batman, and Clark Kent is Clark Kent. Doesn't really, not that many people know that he's Superman, with the exception of like Lois Lane. But here in the movie, you notice that all the heroes they go like as their civilian identities, and when they meet up with the other heroes, they say, "Oh, I know who you are. <laughs> you're you're this superhero. Are you yeah, fine?" Yeah. Like, oh, okay, fine. And they're like, "Oh, yeah, yes, I am." So, <laughs> yeah. There's a scene where Aquaman and, and Bruce Wayne are just <laughs> chatting about. Uh, being Batman out in the open and granted there's some third world country that in the middle of nowhere but still like they're just talking about that uh, at the end of the film Bruce Wayne says he wants to change Wayne Manor into the headquarters of the Justice League so it's like uh, how's that going to keep your secret identity unless you're going to publicly say yeah I, uh, I'm i the financial backer of uh, the Justice League because that's sort of in the comic books where he came mm -hmm. and said yeah I'm the financial backer of Batman I'm not really Batman I just <laughs> pay for all the bills okay fine but still, there, there were scenes where uh, Superman is resurrected. Oh, yeah, by the way, Superman's resurrected. Uh, and they're trying to calm him down, trying to get him back, you know, into his right state of mind. And they start talking to him and referring to him as Clark. And they're just these regular cops <laughs> right next to Lois Lane. And he's saying, Clark, Clark, Clark. I'm like, <laughs> right there. And then at the end of the movie, uh, they're at the kid farm. And they're moving stuff back into the farm and rebooting, and Clark Kent's right out there, and it's like, so he's just back from the dead, <laughs> you know. You know, Superman comes back, and Clark Kent comes back, even though you know Superman died, and Clark Kent always died. I guess no one's going to put those connections together. <laughs> no one's going to figure it out. And even if they don't, it's like, hey, Clark, the guy we had this nice big old funeral that we literally, you know, we thought was dead and buried with his mom crying her heart out, you know, in her, you know, his uh. 
unofficial fiance crying our heart out. Oh yeah, you're alive. How you doing? You know, let's help you let some move back in. You know, are we gonna do secret identities or not? You know, pick a pony or not. Even Diana, how is it that she's worried about some photo that Kabi Probably was copied in Lex's files dozens of other times. Just wants to get that photo, have her secret life identity, even though she doesn't wear a mask. You know, <laughs> she she goes to high profile art galleries and stuff like that, and yet you know fights crime and still doesn't wear a mask. But at the movie, movie she's sort of public. You see her talking to some little girls and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, are you a secret identity <laughs> or not? Mm -hmm. Are you you know what, what, uh, you know that's a cornerstone. You know that's one of the main reasons why it lost points. In uh, my rating, I don't know if it was you know, one of the reasons why you lost points. It's, it was quite minor, but just a little bit. Yeah. So it's like, you're either going to do this or not. So please, when the films keep going, like, hey, you guys going to have secret identities, or you're all totally public, like the Avengers, which mm -hmm. you're trying to not be like. <laughs> but yeah, uh, pick a pony you like. So overall, our final review and thoughts of this movie, Justice League. I was a little bit hesitant going into this movie, wondering if Warner Brothers and DC will maintain the momentum from Wonder Woman earlier this year, and I could rest assured that at the end when I left the movie theater, they maintained the momentum that they did with Wonder Woman earlier this year, and I was very satisfied with the movie Justice League. Mm -hmm. And I was very satisfied as well. I spent the majority of my days uh, watching the movie look like this. I was just ecstatic because, you know, despite the narrative problems, it's still the classic heroes together. I mean, they could have been playing chess all day. I probably would have been smiling like crazy, uh, which is why I almost gave this an A-, minus. but you know, when I thought about it more, it's okay, it's good, it's almost there, it's almost at that top level, mm -hmm. but you know, certain issues, uh, mainly with the secret identity, uh, mainly with, uh, you know, what are you going to show me or not show me, and being coherent should it be the top highlight of a movie? <laughs> okay. I don't care what you know movie it is. You know, I I watch all types of films. I watch horror movies, dramas, cartoons, documentaries. Uh, you know, some are good, some are bad. But being coherent shouldn't be the highlight of a major motion picture. So being coherent should be something for a student film, not uh, a major blockbuster like this. So that's why it winds up being a B plus for me. And it's being for you, right? Correct. All right, thank you very much for watching our review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm High Hero Night Ranger. This is Balatron. And we hope you'll watch more of our videos. And we hope you'll like, share, and subscribe, and all those wonderful things. And remember, if you don't like the video, go ahead and click the dislike button. I just want some feedback. <laughs> so, thanks again for watching. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.